worship with the people of the Phillips United Methodist Church in the foothills of the Rocky Mountains. I'm Pastor Joyce to Tony Hill and so glad that you could worship with us on this day. This day is special because it is the official ending of our church year with Christ the King Sunday. It is also Thanksgiving week and boy has it ever been a crazy year. But is there something you can give thanks for? Let us worship a God whose steadfast love is with us forever. Sheep and goats are welcome here. Saints and sinners are part of God's world. Come, rejoice in Christ Jesus who welcomes us all. Share in his grace that we may show compassion and love, comfort and mercy, giving as we have received. and welcome to Children's Time on this weekend before Thanksgiving. When we think of Thanksgiving, we usually think of turkeys and pies made from pumpkins and pilgrims and all of the traditional things that are part of the holiday. Many of us have family or friends over to our house or we go to their houses to celebrate. This year might be a little different with COVID. Many of us may not be able to share that time with all of our family and friends or to go to the places that we normally do. But one thing will always be the same, and that is the meaning of this holiday. And the meaning is right in the word, Thanksgiving. There's actually two meanings. The first one is one we are very familiar with, and that's listing all the things we're thankful for. So I'm gonna ask you in a moment to close your eyes, and I'm gonna say, what are you thankful for? And whatever comes to your mind, I want you to shout it out. Here we go. What are you thankful for? Family. That's what came to my mind first. But many of us will say different things. Family, friends, pets, our health, the beautiful outdoors, our faith, our church, our God. Most of us are thankful for many, many things, not just one. But Thanksgiving also has a second meaning, and it's in the word also. Thanksgiving is not just giving thanks, but giving to everything we are thankful for. That means acting in kind ways, helping out, being friends, taking care of one another. That's also part of it. And when we do those things, we're really saying to God, we are thankful for you because we know that all of the things in our life that we're thankful for came from God. So let us pray. God, we will always try to keep thankfulness in our heart. And we will always try to do what shows our love and kindness toward everything that means something to us and that we are thankful for. In doing so, please know we are thankful for you. Amen. 
Have a great Thanksgiving. Good morning, everyone. So good to be with you. We are now approaching the Thanksgiving season, a time for us to renew our minds and think about being grateful for all the blessings we have. First of all, let me tell you that I have only one update on uh, persons that need our special prayers, and that would be uh, Rose Davis, who does have the COVID-19 virus. She lives at the Meridian, and I understand they have several cases over there. So certainly our prayers go out to her and to all of the residents there. And of course, I think of all of those who are indeed in retirement homes, um, where it's a, they're a little more vulnerable than the rest of us. So certainly we want to hold everyone in prayer. Then, of course, we constantly are thinking of our hospital workers and all of the people who are struggling with the issues of COVID-19 and those who are struggling with issues of fires and smoke, and it hasn't all disappeared yet in spite of the snow that we got. We're grateful for some snow. So first of all, um, let's have a moment of silent prayer as you think of those in your own family that need special prayers and your friends and neighbors. So let us be in silent prayer. Amen. O oh God, our Creator, it is the time of thanksgiving in our nation. We have had a hard year of fires and smoke, dissension on the streets, fear and anxiety because of the COVID virus. But it is time for us now to remember our blessings, to be grateful for the gifts of our lives, our families, our friends, the warmth of our homes, the beautiful sunrises and sunsets, the modern conveniences that we have, the washers and dryers and dishwashers, the gift of technology, giving us a chance to stay in touch with our friends and to worship together. It is a time to be grateful for the doctors and nurses and hospitals and for all of the teachers and all the persons that keep our streets and our homes safe. Forgive us when we forget how very blessed we are, and forgive us when we forget that we are your voice and hands and heart in this world. Help us to live with joy in the blessing of each day. Help us to be renewed by knowing that you love us and forgive us. We thank you for your continued presence in our lives by your Holy Spirit and by your Son, Jesus the Christ. And we pray together now in his name. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And now for our morning offering. Enter into God's gates with thanksgiving and God's courts with praise. For God is good and God's steadfast love endures forever. This morning, I'd like to tell you a bit about the United Methodist Student Day offering. It is an offering that we normally take up during the time, uh, uh, during November, as students come home and we're reminded of the blessing of having that education. And now here's a little, a little video that tells you about it. And if you would like to participate in giving, just mark your offering as you send it in United Methodist Student Day.
making sure that our young members have the tools to impact their communities and the world is a promise that the United Methodist Church is keeping. Each year, young people who have shown leadership within their own congregations have the opportunity to do remarkable work at colleges and universities across the nation. The United Methodist Student Day offering makes a statement, and that statement is, the church is fully investing in its future. The offering provides scholarships and low-interest student loans to United Methodist students to assist with their education. The church reaps the benefits when students graduate and go into a number of fields that enhance the world and the mission of the church. On United Methodist Student Day, you help support the young men and women who are contributing to the leadership and transformation of the world. God of mercy and compassion, what is the offering that pleases you most? Certainly not the token gift that makes us feel that we've done all that's required, but a gift that reminds us that need is all around us and compassion and love are needed desperately and can be given extravagantly. May the gifts we give through your church help the hungry, thirsty, the imprisoned, but may our whole being be centered on seeing the opportunities to personally make your love real to a hurting world. We follow in Christ's holy, loving way. For this is what the Sovereign Lord says, I myself will search for my sheep and look after them. As a shepherd looks after his scattered flock when he is with them, so I will look after my sheep. I will rescue them from all the places where they are scattered on a day of clouds and darkness. I will bring them out from the nations and gather them from the countries, and I will bring them into their own land. I will pasture them in the mountains of Israel, in the ravines and in all the settlements in the land. I will tend them in a good pasture, and the mountain heights of Israel will be grazing land. There they will lay, lie down in good grazing land, and there they will feed in a rich pasture on the mountains of Israel. I myself will tend my sheep and have them lie down, declares the Sovereign Lord. I will search for the lost and bring back the strays. I will bind up the injured and strengthen the weak, but the sleek and the strong I will destroy. I will shepherd the flock with justice. Therefore, this is what the Sovereign Lord says to them. See, I myself will judge between the fat sheep and the lean sheep, because you show with flank and shoulder, fighting all the weak sheep with your horns until you have driven them away. I will save my flock, and they will no longer be plundered. I will judge between one sheep and another. I will place over them one shepherd, my servant David, and he will tend them, and he will tend them and be their shepherd. I, the Lord, will be their God, and my servant David will be the prince among them. I, the Lord, have spoken. Over the past month, we have been learning about the kingdom of God, specifically as Jesus described it in Matthew 25 in the Gospels. What is the kingdom of God, and who is in the kingdom of God? What are people like? Jesus says, when you see these kinds of things, then you know God is present, and you are there. We have heard the story about the bridesmaids, and we've learned that God's people in the kingdom are people who are always watching out for opportunities to serve, to let their light shine, and enter into God's joy. We have seen with Pastor Marilyn, as she shared about the par parable of the talents, that God's people are generous and they are willing to share their talents. And today in Matthew 25, we have another story about sheep and goats. But the main message here is that God's people are a people who are willing to reach out. And when you reach out to the last and the least of these, 
you have served God, and God is with you. Hear these uh, words of Jesus in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 25, starting at verse 31. When the Son of Man comes in glory, and all of the angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory, and all the nations will be gathered before him, and then he will separate people like a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats in the herd, and he will put the sheep on his right hand and the goats on his left hand. And then the king will say to those at his right hand, come, for you are blessed by my father. Inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry and you gave me food. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger and you welcomed me. I was naked and you clothed me. I was sick and you took care of me. And then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry and gave you food? When were you thirsty and we gave you drink? And when was it that we saw you a stranger and welcomed you, or naked, and gave you some clothing? And when was it that we saw you sick, or in prison, and visited you? And the king will answer them, Surely I tell you, just as you did it for the least of these who are my members of my family, you did it to me. And this is God's word for God's people. For our message on this Thanksgiving weekend, I have a beautiful little story that is short and powerful. And I want to thank my friend, Steve Goodyear, who is a pastor in the Rocky Mountain Conference for sharing this story with me. And I hope you like it as much and find it as meaningful as, as much as I have. Thanksgiving Day was drawing near and the first grade teacher gave her class a fun assignment. Everyone was to draw a picture of something for which they were thankful. Now most of the class, you might say, was economically disadvantaged. And many would be celebrating the holiday with traditional turkey and all the goodies of the season, and these, the teacher thought, would be the subjects of most of her students' art. And indeed, they were. But little Douglas made a different kind of a picture. Well, Douglas was a different kind of little boy. He was the teacher's true child of misery. He was frail. He always seemed to be rather unhappy. And as other children played at recess, Douglas was likely to stand close by the side of the teacher. And one could only guess the pain that Douglas felt behind those very sad eyes. Yes, indeed, his picture was different. When asked to draw a picture, of something for which he was thankful. He held up his picture, and it was a simple hand. It was nothing else, just an empty hand. And you know, you can make a lot of fun stuff even with a hand. You can make a turkey with a hand too. But his abstract image captured the imagination of all the other children in the class. And they started to wonder, well, hey, Douglas, whose hand is it? So then the teacher took the picture and walked around the classroom and asked, take a look at the picture. Let's think about whose hand it just might happen to be. Well, one little kid said, oh, I know, I know. It's got to be the farmer's hand because the farmers raised the turkeys. Another child said, well, 
It kind of reminds me of my grandmother's hand. She always tucks me in at night. And still other people guessed, well, I think it could be the hand of God. And God always feeds us. And so the discussion went until the teacher just about forgot about the young artist herself. When the children had gone on to some of their other assignments, the teacher paused at Douglas's desk and she, she bent down and she said, Hey, Douglas, whose hand is this, by the way? And the little boy looked away and he kind of murmured, uh, It's your hand, teacher. The teacher recalled all the times that she had taken his hand and walked with him here and there when he was feeling just a little reluctant. But she had done that with all the other students. She remembered how often she had said, Here, Douglas, take my hand. Let's go outside together. Another time she remembered how she had said to Douglas, Here, Douglas. Let me show you how to use your pencil just right. Another time, she held out her hand and said, Hey, Douglas, let's do this together. We can do it. You can do it. Douglas was most thankful for his teacher's hand. Brushing aside the tears, she went on with her work. I believe that this story speaks more than thankfulness. I think it says something about teachers that are teaching. It talks about parents and their parenting and friends showing friendship and how it means, what all this means to the Douglases of the world. They may not always say thanks, but, but they will always remember the hand that reaches out. Will you pray with me? Compassionate God, help us to show compassion to those we meet. Help us to see your face in every hungry child, in every tired woman, in every disappointed man. Help us to hear your cry in every person who mourns, every person who's lonely, every person in agony. Help us to feel your presence that we might have the courage and the confidence to act with compassion and love everywhere that we go and with those whom we meet. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
people of God, go forth into this world with thanksgiving. Go and seek the lost, bind up the brokenhearted, heal the sick, encourage those who are faint-hearted. Go to seek justice and love mercy. And may God be with you until we meet again. I'm gonna live